Okay, good morning class. Today we are going to be reading the book. It is called Otis by Lauren Long. Can anybody tell me what they think this book will be about just by looking at the cover? Ellie? A tractor and a cow. What do you think it's going to be about a tractor and a cow? They're friends. They're friends. Okay, now what does anybody, does anybody know what friendship and loyalty mean? What does friendship and loyal, loyalty mean to you? Friendship is like two people that get along maybe. Yeah. And what does loyalty have to do with friendship? Um, we're like nice. nice yeah. Other, Why do you think they're nice other. to each other? Because they're friends. All right. So let's begin reading. This is Otis by Lauren Long. There once was a friendly little tractor. His name was Otis, and every day Otis and his farmer would work together taking care of the farm they called home. Otis liked to work. But after working hard all day, Otis was ready to unwind and play. He would ride the rolling hills and skirt mud pond down by the corn. He would leapfrog bales of hay and explode through the haystacks. On occasion, he would chase a rabbit or play ring around the rosy with the ducks to the sound of his steady putt, puff, puttity chuff. And sometimes at the end of the day, he would just sit under the apple tree and watch the farm below. Every night, tired but happy, Otis would puff putt into the little stall in the barn that was all his. One night when Otis was fast asleep, the farmer brought a beautiful baby calf into the barn. The calf bawled and bawled for her mother, but when the sleepy sound of a soft putt, puff, puttity chuff calmed from the next, came from the next stall, the scared little calf stopped crying and drifted off to sleep. From that day on, the calf, and the calf started following the little tractor wherever he went. Puff, puff, puttity chuff. She followed him over the rolling hills and down by mud pond. She was right behind him, leapfrogging bales of hay. And the calf made their games of ring around the rosy all the better. Sometimes at the end of the day, the two of them would just sit together under the apple tree and watch the farm below. Otis loved his little calf, and the little calf loved Otis. Then one day, the farmer surprised everyone with a brand new yellow tractor. Time to move out, Otis! said the farmer. He took Otis out of the little stall in the barn that was all his and parked him behind the barn. Then he backed the big yellow tractor into the stall next to the little calf. Does anybody think how Otis is feeling being parked behind the little barn? Hey. Ava? Sad. Maybe Why do you think he's sad? Um, because like this big tractor just came Yes, he did. He just came and took his spot from the farm. Anybody else have an idea? Do they disagree with Ava? Morgan? And because, like, now this big tractor gets to be by the calf, he doesn't. Right, yep, he doesn't get to be by his little calf anymore, his friend. Good. But the little calf didn't like the big yellow tractor. He had a deep, rumbling snore that shook the stall when he slept. There was no one to purr the little calf gently to sleep, no one to spend her days with. And Otis? Otis could not even see his farm as the weeds began to grow over his tires. His friend often sat with him, but she could not get him to play like the old days. It was early summer when the farmer discovered a poster. Who has the prettiest calf in the land? Judges will decide at the county fair and award a fancy blue ribbon to the winner. The farmer knew the answer. He would show the little calf. But on the morning of the fair, the little calf was nowhere to be found. She had wandered down to the mud pond by the cornfield to cool off. When she wadded into the muddy water, her feet sank. With every step, she sank deeper and deeper and deeper. The little calf was stuck in the mud. Get the hands, the farmer shouted when he saw her. All the farmhand came running with their ropes but the more they tugged, the more the s more stuck the calf got. 
Get the big yellow tractor, the farmer shouted. He can save her. But the big tractor just scared the little calf. She sank in deeper and deeper. Nearby, farmers began to gather. Then call the fire chief Douglas and the fire truck, the farmer shouted. They can save our little calf. But the sight of the big red fire truck started the little calf in even deeper. The farmer was in fit to be tied. If the farmlands and the big tractor and even fire chief Douglas and his fire truck couldn't save the little calf, who could? Suddenly, the little calf's ears perked up. Over the hum of the growing crowd, there came a faint sound in the distance. A soft, rhythmic purr. Puff, puff, puttity, chuff. The crowd turned and looked. The sound became louder. Put, puff, puttity, chuff. And all at once, Otis puffed, puffed from around the barn. He turned and headed straight toward the mud pond. Otis puffed, puffed down the rolling hill and rolled right up next to the muddy water edge. The calf turned her friend puttering purr and bawled. It was something like a hello. Then to the sound of his gentle chuff and the amazement of all the people in the crowd, Otis slowly began to circle the pond. He circled and circled and the little calf turned and turned, never taking her eyes off of her friend. With each ring Otis made around Mud Pond, the muddy grip loosened until the calf was able to stumble out of the pond on her own. The two friends had found each other again. Otis led the calf right down the dusty road toward the village, and everyone threw flowers as they went, following them into town. It looked like a happy parade. No one needed a fancy blue ribbon to tell them that the calf was a special calf. Otis was a spe spe special tractor, and the two of them were special friends. From that day on, the farmer discovered that with Otis's puttering purr beside the chicken coop, his chickens laid more eggs. At milking time, the Otis's, Otis's gentle chuff nearby, his cow poured more milk. On occasion, Otis even got to join the farmer and the big yellow tractor out in the fields. But often, at the end of the day, Otis would just sit with his friend under the apple tree and watch the farm below. The end.